What should a food handler do if experiencing symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, jaundice, or fever with a sore throat? A. Continue working but avoid direct contact with food. B. Call the person in charge at the food service facility. C. Take over the counter medication and continue working. D. Wait for symptoms to pass without informing anyone. Answer B. Call the person in charge at the food service facility. How should a food handler manage an infected boil, cut, burn, or sore on the hand or wrist while handling food? A. By washing hands more frequently. B. Cover the injury with a clean bandage and a latex-free glove. C. Apply antiseptic cream and leave it uncovered. D. Avoid using the injured hand. Answer B. Cover the injury with a clean bandage and a latex-free glove. What is the correct technique for hand washing for a food handler? A. Use cold water and soap, then air dry. B. Quick rinse with water and soap, then shake hands dry. C. Wash with water only, then wipe on a common cloth. D. Use running warm water and soap, scrub and rinse for 20 seconds, then dry with a single-use towel or air dryer. Answer. D. Use running warm water and soap, scrub and rinse for 20 seconds, then dry with a single-use towel or air dryer. What should a food handler do immediately after blowing their nose, sneezing, coughing, or touching their eyes, nose, or mouth? A. Wash their hands thoroughly. B. Continue working but avoid touching food. C. Use a hand sanitizer. D. Wear food service gloves. Answer A. Wash their hands thoroughly. What is the rule regarding bare hand contact with ready-to-eat food? A. It is allowed if hands are washed properly. B. Use of utensils or single-use gloves is mandatory. C. It is acceptable for experienced food handlers. D. Allowed only for certain types of food. Answer. B. Use of utensils or single-use gloves is mandatory. Why are food service gloves not a substitute for proper hand washing? A. They can tear easily. B. Gloves can spread germs just like bare hands. C. Hand washing is quicker than using gloves. D. Gloves are only for handling raw food. Answer. B. Gloves can spread germs just like bare hands. Which of the following is considered ready-to-eat food? A. Raw, unwashed vegetables. B. Uncooked rice and pasta. C. Raw washed cut fruits and vegetables. D. Frozen food items. Answer. C. Raw washed cut fruits and vegetables. Why is it important to change gloves before handling ready-to-eat food? A. To prevent cross-contamination. B. Because it is a legal requirement. C. To keep the gloves from becoming too warm. D. As a routine hygiene practice regardless of previous tasks. Answer. A. To prevent cross-contamination. Which of the following is a major mistake often causing foodborne illness? A. Excessive use of cleaning chemicals. B. Inadequate hand washing. C. Frequent hand washing. D. Using too many utensils. Answer. B. Inadequate hand washing. What role does management play in preventing foodborne illness? A. Setting the menu and food prices. B. Ensuring proper decoration and ambience of the facility. C. Training food handlers and ensuring the practice of food safety activities. D. Managing customer complaints effectively. Answer. C. Training food handlers and ensuring the practice of food safety activities. 
Which activity is not recommended for food handlers to prevent foodborne illness? A. Using single-use gloves for ready-to-eat food. B. Washing hands only at the beginning of the shift. C. Cooking each animal product to its required internal temperature. D. Storing foods properly to prevent contamination. Answer B. Washing hands only at the beginning of the shift. How can foodborne illness be described? A. An illness only caused by chemical contamination in food. B. An illness that affects only certain types of food. C. A condition that always changes the taste and smell of food. D. An illness resulting from eating contaminated food. Answer D. An illness resulting from eating contaminated food. Can food contaminated with organisms, germs, always be identified by its look, smell, or taste? A. Yes, it always appears or tastes different. B. No, it does not always look, smell, or taste different from non contaminated food. C. Only if it's contaminated with chemicals. D. Only when the contamination is severe. Answer B. No, it does not always look, smell, or taste different from non contaminated food. What symptoms are associated with foodborne illness? A. Diarrhea, vomiting, fever, cramping, and nausea. B. Only nausea and vomiting. C. Constant thirst and dizziness. D. Skin rash and itching. Answer A. Diarrhea, vomiting, fever, cramping, and nausea. What can cause foodborne illness? A. Only improper cooking techniques. B. Organisms, germs, chemicals, or toxins. C. Eating food past its expiration date. D. Eating without washing hands. Answer B. Organisms, germs, chemicals, or toxins. Why are hot and cold holding temperatures important in preventing illness? A. They enhance the flavor of food. B. They maintain the nutritional value of food. C. They prevent bacteria growth by keeping food out of the danger zone. D. They are only important for taste and presentation. Answer C. They prevent bacteria growth by keeping food out of the danger zone. What temperature range defines the danger zone for food? A. Between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. B. Between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. C. Between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 125 degrees Fahrenheit. D. Between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Answer B. Between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. What is required for food being cooled or heated in relation to the danger zone? A. It must move through the danger zone as rapidly as possible. B. It should remain in the danger zone for flavor enhancement. C. It should be left in the danger zone for at least two hours. D. Temperature changes should occur gradually to retain food quality. Answer A. It must move through the danger zone as rapidly as possible. What is the proper temperature for hot holding time slash temperature control for safety of potentially hazardous foods? A. 120 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. B. 135 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. C. 100 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. D. 150 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. Answer. B. 135 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. What is the proper temperature for cold holding time slash temperature control for safety of potentially hazardous foods? A. 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. B. 32 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. 
c. 45 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. d. 50 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Answer a. 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Can food be made safe to eat if it has been in the danger zone for 4 hours or more? A. Yes, if it is cooked immediately. B. No, it cannot be made safe. C. Yes, if it is refrigerated immediately. D. Only if it is non-perishable food. Answer. B. No, it cannot be made safe. What should be done with potentially hazardous food that has been in the danger zone for over four hours? A. It should be immediately cooked. B. It should be frozen for later use. C. It can be served if it looks and smells fine. D. It must be discarded. Answer. D. It must be discarded. Why is it important to cook foods to the recommended temperatures? A. To enhance flavor and texture. B. To kill disease-causing germs. C. To maintain the food's color. D. To reduce cooking time. Answer. B. To kill disease-causing germs. What is physical contamination in food? A. The addition of extra spices or ingredients. B. Foreign objects accidentally introduced into food. C. Changes in the food's natural color and texture. D. Spoilage due to expired ingredients. Answer. B. Foreign objects accidentally introduced into food. How can cross-contamination be prevented? A. By cooking all foods at the same temperature. B. By avoiding the use of gloves. C. By keeping foods refrigerated at all times. D. By using different cutting boards for raw meat and vegetables. Answer. D. By using different cutting boards for raw meat and vegetables.